Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, another dose of winter weather headed our way. Within the next 24 hours, a winter storm watch will go into effect for everybody. We'll talk about snowfall totals and the timing of this next snow event coming up. Plus, a major move from the governor to get your kids back in class. Children learn better in classrooms. What our local schools are doing to get ready for the deadline that's just over a month away. And crossover day is here for the Commonwealth. The new restrictions and legalizations that could be sent to the governor's desk. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. And I'm John Carlin. Your local weather authority is tracking that storm system we've been talking about. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowich joins us now. Jeff, so mm -hmm. rinse and repeat from last weekend? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Timing and totals look very, very similar. We do have a winter storm watch in effect Saturday, 6 p.m. through Sunday, midday. Everybody's under this winter storm watch. Likely going to be upgraded to a winter storm warning here. If not tonight, then certainly by tomorrow morning. Satellite radar composite showing that we've got nothing to worry about here as we head into tonight. Really, even as we head into the day tomorrow, we are indeed going to be dry. Again, it's after the sun goes down tomorrow where conditions will start to deteriorate. So what we're tracking this weekend, snow arrives for us late Saturday evening, lasting through Sunday morning. We are looking at around one to three inches of snow for south side, three to six inches of snow everywhere else. I can tell you that there could be a spine right along uh, uh, the Blue Ridge that picks up uh, six to perhaps seven or eight inches of snow. But for the most most part, we're looking at one to three south side, three to six elsewhere. There will be no snow falling during the Super Bowl. This is again long gone by midday Sunday. Storm threats, snow on roads are going to put that strong winds. We don't think that's going to be an issue because I don't think there's going to be much wind around to kind of blow the snow around. It is certainly going to be pretty uh, risky to head out and about though Sunday morning. Maybe a little bit better Sunday afternoon as highs uh, climb into the lower 40s. And then by Sunday night into Monday morning, a refreeze is likely. John. Thank you, Jeff. And a homework assignment from the governor gets students back in the classroom today. He gave districts until March 15th to make that happen. 10 News reporter McKinley Struthers sits down with teachers, parents, and superintendents as the planning begins. Children learn better in classrooms, and that's where they need to be. And they need to be there by March or at least have the option to. Governor Ralph Northam saying that the challenges like mental health, like behavioral and learning challenges, they far exceed the risk of not returning to the classroom. I know the importance of safety, but I also know the importance of our students education. Anthony Swan is a Rocky Mount teacher and the state teacher of the year. Friday it was announced he will sit on the State Board of Education. He and I spoke one on one. If you go to the doctor, would you want an uncertified doctor? Or would you want an uncertified doctor attending to your needs? Absolutely not. You wouldn't. The same emphasis needs to be placed on education as well, he says. While most of our systems already offer some form of in-person learning, for systems like Martinsville, it's a race against the clock to develop a plan. We're prepared. Uh, we made preparations in January uh, to reopen schools, but the thing that helped us the most this week, McKinley, is the fact that we have our, uh, our staff first round of vaccination. Parents say they just want the best for their students. I believe these kids needed part of their developmental progress is to be around other students and be with their peers. The Virginia Education Association worries things are moving too fast. In a statement, they said, quote, the best way to move ahead is not to set an arbitrary date. Instead, we must keep our focus on ensuring that all school staff members have the opportunity to be vaccinated and that all necessary safety precautions and mitigation measures are in place, end quote. The date the governor set is March 15th. Reporting on McKinley Struther, 10 News, working for you. Governor Northam also emphasized a more dynamic summer school option for students who are falling behind. We're told those plans for many systems are not finalized, but as soon as they are, of course, we'll pass that information along. More than 50 cadets and staff have tested positive for COVID-19 at VMI. To stop the spread, leaders have suspended visitation and march downs. Cadets who test positive are in a hotel off post. Last semester virus, VMI says the spread tends to happen in close quarter barracks, so they're spreading everyone out as they disinfect. 
you know, we reduce the visitation, the contact among the cadets, and, and that seemed to help things. Uh, so we're, we've kind of moved back to that. While a vaccination plan is still underway, about 30 cadets who are trained as EMTs have already received their doses. A team effort in Central Virginia will get a regional vaccine site up and running. Lynchburg local health leaders and Liberty University have reached a leasing agreement to convert the old TJ Maxx store at Candler Station Shopping Center. Officials say it's a key location because of its parking lot and access to public transportation and Route 460. The interim city manager says there's no timetable on when the site will be open because of vaccine shortages. Don't come yet to this site uh, because we don't have it open yet. We don't have enough vaccine to sustain it. So um, when it when it is time, we will certainly publicize that and, and be ready. The site will be used for Lynchburg as well as Amherst, Appomattox, Bedford and Campbell counties. Breaking news tonight from the state capitol. Both chambers have now approved their own bills to legalize marijuana in Virginia. This on the same day they approved legislation to abolish the death penalty. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett working for you to break down what happened in Richmond. Heated debates in the Virginia General Assembly Friday as two major bills passed both the House and Senate, now moving to the other chamber for review. A bill to abolish the death penalty passing both chambers. But it's not about revenge. Death penalty is not about retribution. Ultimately, it's about justice. The death penalty is the direct descendant of lynching. It is state-sponsored racism. The House and Senate each passing similar bills to legalize marijuana. This bill provides uh, social equity and helps improve those communities who have been most impacted and harmed by the prohibition against cannabis. Legalizing marijuana will not end the illegal activity and sales. The bill eliminates criminal penalties for marijuana possession for anyone 21 or older, clears those convicted of certain marijuana-related crimes, and adds a tax on retail marijuana and products. Roanoke Democrat Delegate Sam Rasool voted in favor, but has some concerns. Making sure that we take those revenues and put them back into communities that really need them, making sure that we have the proper cr criminal justice reforms, make sure that we're thoughtful about the health and well-being uh, of our children. Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. Governor Ralph Northam has extended the session from 30 to 46 days, and lawmakers will reconvene on Wednesday. New tonight at 6, a woman has been arrested after a fire earlier this week. Danville authorities charged Lottie Thomas with arson for Wednesday's fire on Freeze Road right near Highland Burial Park. As we've reported, a dog was found dead inside the home. No one was hurt. A local state police trooper is behind bars after rape charges. Derek Thompson faces charges for several sex crimes, all of which are felonies. He works in Area 23, which covers Charlotte and Halifax counties. Now, this is related to an incident reported back in September. Thompson is being held at the New River Regional Jail. State police have suspended him without pay until the outcome of the trial. The countdown to kickoff is underway, but there's a new way to show support for your favorite team. What sports betting companies are offering ahead of the Super Bowl to get you to bet big. We are just days away from Super Bowl Sunday, and just in time, sports betting has arrived. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you're seeing it everywhere. You can now place a bet online. In the few weeks since it has gone live, both DraftKings and FanDuel say there's been a large turnout from Virginians. This weekend is expected to be no different. Not everybody makes bets all year long, but it seems like everyone wants to have a bet for the Super Bowl. And with all the offerings we have, you know, everything from the national anthem to the uh, to the coin toss, which starts the game, to everything at the end, what's the last play going to be, and everything in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you can bet on who wins the toss. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, right, that's 50 And the national 50, anthem. Right? And what? the national, I don't know what it was, the time of the national <laughs> Maybe anthem? Maybe the time. Yeah, I don't know. DraftKings, FanDuel, and others have special deals all ahead of the big game. And the countdown's also on for this year's Polar Plunge. Yeah, the fun before the big day that you can take part in. 
And you are looking at a live picture from our Martinsville New College Institute sky cam. A beautiful end to the day. We certainly saw our fair share of sunshine today, but snow is on the horizon. How much snow you'll see in Henry County? We'll let you know coming up. Special Olympics Virginia has met its goal for this year's polar plunge. Yes, in our team, the polar vortex also reached our goal. So we're in the final week of fundraising, the plunge week. Uh, it wraps up tomorrow with a virtual celebration. There's also a costume contest this year. The Western Virginia Regional Jails Plunge team that we featured last month is in the running to win as the Adams family. <laughs> Officers and staff say being involved with Special Olympics has a big impact. For me personally, you know, it's about public service and giving back to the community, and I think that's true for all law enforcement in the state. We partner with Special Olympics, and it's just so rewarding to interact with the athletes and their families. So be sure to go like and comment on their picture on the Plunge Virginia Facebook page, and of course you can watch highlights of our Plunge. It's happening tomorrow, but you can watch those highlights tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Today was a day where we started with some cloud cover, but as the day went on, we certainly saw more sunshine. The precipitation that got us last night, long gone snow showers in the north, staying to the north, and we look quiet here tonight into tomorrow. All right, so tomorrow we're going to start out Saturday morning with sunshine. However, as we head into Saturday afternoon, clouds built, but all day long Saturday, we're dry. When the sun goes down, that's when things start to change. By around 10, 1030, may start to see a little bit of rain towards south side, may start to see some snow showers in areas along and west of the parkway, but look at about 1 a.m. At that point in time, everybody is likely seeing snow, and where you see these darker purple shades, that's moderate to heavy snow. As we continue to go through time, you'll notice, uh-oh, my clicker is not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step off and uh, just kind of do this here uh, with the actual space bar. As we go through time, you'll notice that around 7 a.m. on Sunday, we still have certainly some snow showers in areas along and north of 460, south of 460 towards south side. May have that change over back to rain. Uh, by 10, 1030, it's gone. The storm is gone, and by Sunday afternoon, we will see the triumph and return of sunshine. Now, a look at uh, snowfall accumulation Saturday night in the Sunday morning areas in white that is for basically south side locations one to three inches of snow everybody else lynchburg highlands southern shenandoah roanoke valley new river valley and mountain empire we're looking at three to six inches of snow there could certainly be isolated spots seeing a little bit more than that right along the spine of the blue ridge right along the blue ridge parkway there's not going to be much ice with this a minimal threat for ice but again the roads saturday night into sunday morning will likely be very tricky may turn a little bit better by the afternoon as highs will hit the lower 40s but then refreezing will likely take Take place Sunday night. 29 Hot Springs, 38 Whitfield, 43 Roanoke. It's 49 in Danville and also into South Boston. Temperatures colder to the northwest. Eventually, we're going to tap into some of that colder air by early next week. It's been a breezy day, no doubt for us. Winds sustained right now anywhere between roughly 7 and 18 miles per hour. Winds are at their strongest, as you would expect, in the highlands and also into the New River Valley. But I'll tell you, tomorrow we're only looking at sustained winds 4 to 8 miles per hour. It doesn't look like we're going to have a whole lot of wind on Saturday. And when the snow impacts us Saturday night and a Sunday morning, winds still will not play much of a role. So blowing snow likely not going to happen with this go around. For tonight, clear, calm, cold, overnight lows tonight in the mid to upper 20s in the mountains, outside the mountains, upper 20s and low to mid 30s. For tomorrow, clouds thicken, we are seasonable. Highs in the mountains in the 40s, outside the mountains, mid to upper 40s and low to mid 50s. Hot spot tomorrow will likely be south side, cool spot will be the highlands. Extended forecast showing that snow Saturday night into Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, we dry out and see more sun. Monday is dry. Tuesday, clouds thicken, and then we'll have some light precipitation chances here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. For the most part, during the day, it's a few rain showers, but at night, especially in the mountains, may have a little bit of a wintry mix. Temperatures, again, go up to 50 on Tuesday, only to fall into the 30s by Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. Gave a lot of thought. Uh, to, to this name, um, we took feedback from the local community. Um, we also wanted something that would uh, complement our heritage and our location in the New River Valley. Um, but ultimately, we wanted something that was fun um, and that could appeal to everyone, especially the youngest among us. And uh, I think this brand really captures that. It's something that just puts a smile on your face. And that's the goal. 
Indeed, it is no longer a short season A ball affiliate of the New York Yankees. The Pulaski baseball team that plays at Calfee Park is the Pulaski River Turtles. The Appalachian League is transitioning into a wooden bat summer league for college players. Pulaski will no doubt enter its 55th season fielding teams in that Appy League. The season in Pulaski opens Saturday, June 5th. 27 home games scheduled. Love the turtle. Fear the turtle. I like that. Yeah, the river I turtle. want my ice cream served in a shell. <laughs> That's a great I'm, idea. I'm all ready for the turtle. Bring it on. There's so many things yeah. you could do with that. Right. And it should be a lot of fun. As long as they're playing baseball, I'm happy. Yeah. There you okay. go. Shell shocked. <laughs> Shell shocked. Shell shocked. <laughs> I like it. There we go. All right. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. And we'll see you back here at 7.